lies one day at a time. Kimmy Kim and Elation's Radio. They're here to get your day going fine. Kimmy Kim and Elation's Radio. Kimmy Kim and Elation's Radio. Kimmy Kim and Elation's Radio. And here's your host. Miss Kim Robinson. Divine greetings. We thank God for Elation Magazine and the opportunity to podcast every Thursday, 5 o'clock Central, the Loretta Petite Show, Women Winning at Life for Ministry to Marketplace. Look for Loretta Petite on Facebook so you can get information about our official prayer line. We'd like you to join us. Thanks again, Elation Magazine. And you're down for the count You feel like life has thrown you blows And God ain't been around But I've come to encourage you To hold your head high Know that God is in your corner now inner life You are a winner You just can't lose Who burn a kale More than a conqueror Jesus in you
a winner. You may not always feel like it. It may not always seem like it, but you are indeed a winner. God created winners. And when we get to know that thing, then we can start to walk in that thing. We are winners. Listen, the Bible tells us that the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof, the world, and they that dwell therein. For he had founded it upon the seas and established it upon the floods. Now, the Lord, the Lord, the Lord, we must lift up our heads to him, O ye gates, and be ye lifted up. The Lord, the Lord, the Lord, everything that we know, everything that we think, everything that we are have become, it is because of the Lord. Remember, the earth is the Lord's and the fold is thereof. The world, that's us and all that dwell therein. And he created winners. Do you think that God in his infinite, in his infinite ways decided, I'm going to sit here and make some losers. I'm going to create myself uh, a world of losers. I'm going to create, oh, yeah, well, I'm going to favor this one and make this one a winner. And then I'm going to push this one down underfoot and make that one a loser. And we say that God is love, and we say that we could always depend on God, and he says that we have a future and a hope. No, no, no. God created winners. We've got to just come into that knowledge, into that understanding. We've got to embrace that the Lord created us as winners. Amen. Let's pray. Father, we come now to thank you. We honor you and we bless you, God. We magnify your name today. We ask that you get the glory that you got my thoughts. And, Father God, that what I have to say will fall upon hearts that's willing to receive and ears that can hear. It is in the name of Jesus we pray. Amen. Well, good evening, everybody. I pray that you're having a great day as well as can be expected in the midst of all of the nervousness, the fear, the frightening activities around us, the sadness, and all of that. There's one thing that sets us apart as winners. When we come into the knowledge of that God created us as winners, when we walk in that knowledge, we learn a thing called perseverance. We learn a thing called perseverance. First of all, God gave us this one unique quality, and that is a quality to acclimate to whatever our surroundings are. He gave us that particular quality. What we give to ourselves is a quality called perseverance. So God gives us acclamation. We give ourselves perseverance. Um, God allows us, of course, when we get into a different situation, uh, we're talking about the new normal in this day and time and everything that's going on. But when we walk into a new situation, we may feel sad. We may feel out of place. We may feel overwhelmed, this, that, or the other. We may feel a little bit sad because it's not what we're used to. But give it a couple of days. That thing that God has given us called acclamation, it starts to take shape, and we start to acclimate to our situations in a place where we can actually cope. We learn how to cope because of this quality called acclimation. But in order to come out a winner, regardless of what's around us, to keep that high mind of faith, uh, to keep our spirits, of course, turned to God and his will and his way, we've got to embrace a thing called perseverance. And perseverance, my friend, is resisting, I'm sorry, is persisting without delay toward your goal or your success. Persisting without delay toward your goal or your success, regardless of what happens in the process. You feel the pain, you have real emotion about what is happening to you, uh, what people are saying to you, what people are doing to you. But even though they hand you that lemon, You find sugar from somewhere, and you make lemonade. So it's called perseverance. We thank God today for uh, my wonderful producer, Ms. Kimmy Kim. Uh, Hats off to you, and I pray that God continues to keep you uh, safe and well, you and yours. She is an awesome sister in Christ. And to Jerry Royce, uh, thank you, sir. We appreciate you more than you know. So we thank the Lord today for all of you that may be tuned in. We want to grow our audience, and we can't grow our audience by not doing anything, um, but by doing a little bit more than we did the last time, and I'm talking to me too. So I want to grow my listening audience, and I need your help. Whomever you are that may be listening on today, I need your help. I need you to be able to share the post from my Facebook group, 
to your Instagram account or your Twitter account or just to another few Facebook accounts. And, of course, if you got this via text that you will share that we're on uh, every Thursday at this time, you can share that. And, of course, if you're part of the Coffee Sisterhood Network, you can share it wherever you please. I just want you to share it um, because we do want to grow the audience. I believe that God gives me great content every week that I can share with you guys. Um, We all need each other. And right now in this uh, most pressing time, we all need each other. We need each other. We really need each other. And we need a word. Uh, We need a word because uh, what we're dealing with can, you know, make a person really lose their mind. Uh, It can truly make a person lose his or her mind. Uh, So many people are being challenged right now, mentally speaking, You may not want to embrace it if it's in your family. You may think, oh, they're going to be okay and da-da-da-da. But this quality that God has given us to acclimate um, is being combated by the enemy. The enemy combats what God gives us every time. I don't care what God gives you. uh, The enemy is going to uh, try and counteract it. But uh, it's going to take faith to be able to receive that gift of acclimation and to be able to settle in our situations uh, as long as it's necessary. But when you embrace what the enemy is dishing out to you and selling to you, it becomes a period of unrest for you. You find yourself unstable, imbalanced. I want you to know that that's not the hand of our mighty God. That is the hand of the enemy. And he causes you to lose sight of who God is in the midst of your troubles. In the midst of your troubles, you start to think that the troubles are bigger than your God. But, you know, that's a flip-flop of what is the reality for a believer. We have got to know that our problem may, may be big. Oh, my God, it may be gigantic, but God is still bigger. We've got to know that, and we've got to walk in faith. I'm not trying to tell you that it's elementary or that it's base or that it's easy. No, it is not always easy. You've got to fight for your victory, and you've got to fight from your place of victory. You've got to fight wherever you are in order to maintain, to ascertain even. You've got to fight for the victory. So always remember that. You've got to fight. And as the saying goes, anything worth having is worth fighting for. So those people around you that may be uh, flowing in unrest, Try and pray with them if you can. Try and minister to them if you can. Try and remind them of a time when God brought them out before or a time that God brought you out. I can't say from a similar situation because I don't ever recall myself being in a situation like this, but um, there have been some other tight spots and some hard times and some tall mountains that God has brought me over and through uh, that I can share with someone. And we've got to do that because anxiety is creeping up on our loved ones. Uh, Anxiety is creeping up on them and they are, you know, going through these undue feelings now. Granted, some people we cannot help because they're dead set on believing what they want to believe. And then you know that also conspiracy theories are raging. They are going, I mean, like at full speed. Conspiracy theories are all around us. Um, but don't be close-minded to the conspiracy theorists. Because I believe in the midst of all of that, there may be an ounce of truth. They just cover it up with all of the extra, (laughs) all of the extra. There may be some things that you might want to jot down and go and check out for yourself. Do a little bit of homework, research yourself, so you can kind of understand, um, you know, what they are conveying wrapped up in such a bulky uh, package, an unusual package. But the conspiracy theories, they do sometimes cause you to want to close your mind, shut the door, hang up the phone, because you don't want to hear all of that. And I know I'm kind of like that sometimes, too. But I always believe that there is a bit of truth. Many times there's a little bit of truth 
hidden in all of that. You just got to go through the layers and get to whatever that truth is. Ask God for guidance. Ask him for illumination. What's going on? But stay focused on what God is saying in your spirit, not what people are saying in your ear. Because a lot of times there, those conspiracy theories will throw you off of your base. Don't let that happen. Be rooted and grounded in the word of God and that he's got you. He's got me. We've got to be rooted and grounded in that fact. Uh, one of the things I found out about some conspiracy theorists, they make their theory their God, and that is a growth era. Because one of the things that God does not approve of is idol gods in any shape, form, or fashion, right? So we've got to keep that in mind. You know, let people express themselves, but always know where you stand. Let me say that again. Let people express themselves, but always know where you stand. Everyone should be given an opportunity to voice where they are. Um, This is a a country of democracy. We all have freedom of speech. So sure, say what you have to say, but also listen to what I've got to say. Um, And be sure, my brothers and my sisters who's listening today, of where you stand. Now, I am from one of the hardest hit hit areas, COVID-19 situation. Um, I am right here in New Orleans, and we are, like, I'm thinking maybe top 10. At one point, it was, like, you know, probably even less than that, or it may be. But in one month, in one month, my uh, my state, my state uh, has seen an overabundance of cases and over abundance of 18,000 cases in one month with over 7,000 deaths in one month. Oh my God. In 31 days, these are the numbers that we're dealing with. And I said last week, I know it has a lot to do with our culture here in this city. Uh, the culture here in this city is visit, visit, visit. Congregate, congregate, congregate. Party, party, party. Festival, festival, festival. Uh, March, march, march. Parade, parade, parade. It is like, you know, this is what we do. But we've got to have spirits of obedience where we will do what we have to do to save your life, to save my life, you know, those in this local area. But um, it's just so much disobedience. So I'm asking the saints of God, wherever you are, to pray for my city, for my state, um, that our people would just be obedient and stop the congregating. Many people are planning to have these big cookouts on Easter Sunday. We can't do it, people. We just can't do it. And um, we've got to just keep on sounding the alarm, hopefully and prayerfully. Uh, somebody will hear with their inner ear and back off. Uh, we are being enforced. Our police departments are issuing citations, uh, are putting people in detention and things of that nature. And then you're stuck with people that may be affected. So, you know, it's just, well, it's, it's a sad, sad scenario. In the midst of all of this, I lost a dear friend. My dear friend succumbed to this uh, COVID-19, and um, it just seems so unreal, just so unreal. And um, I may have mentioned it last week, I'm not sure, but loved him like a brother. And uh, my thoughts and my prayers are going out to the Ed West family, uh, the Ed West family. We loved him so much. Uh, We thank the Lord that he knew um, God in the part of his sins. He knew Jesus. And I'm so grateful for that fact. Amen. All right, so we're going to start to pick up the pace and turn turn um, turn the page. We want to have something positive to share today. So the first thing I want to say to you is, if you want to reach out to me, you can send your emails to me, Loretta Reviews at Gmail dot com, Loretta Reviews at Gmail dot com. Uh, you can hit me up on social media as well. I am Loretta Petit is my handle on Instagram. I am Loretta Petit. Petit is spelled P-E-T-I-T. Five letters, P-E-T-I-T. I am Loretta Petit. On Facebook, simply Loretta Petit. On Twitter, check me out as Preach Girl. Preach Girl on Twitter. This is 
April. And, of course, don't forget, if you're filing your 2016 taxes because you're behind, you have to get it in by April 15th if you're going to collect anything owed to you. You must get your 2016 taxes in by April the 15th. Also, April brings us National Pet Month. National Pet Month. This is the time to be good to your pets and a great time to adopt a pet. Uh, It's also International Amateur Radio Month. International Amateur Radio Month. For all the people that ticker with radios of any kind, it's it's International Radio Month, Amateur Radio Month. Uh, And you can check out some of the things that you can probably get involved in this month, things you can go to to learn by virtually, of course, um, in this particular season we're in. Um, I want to talk to you about winning. I talked about perseverance. Perseverance leads the way. Uh, We've got to be people that persevere. We must be people that persevere. I want to just paint a quick little scenario for you. If you find yourself a part of a group slash team and uh, they seem to um, demean you or ostracize you or make you feel that you're of none effect. Um, They make you feel that you're the dirt of their shoe or pointing fingers, innuendos, calling you names, and all of those things in that arena. Um, You can excuse yourself or you can voice yourself. You've got to speak up for yourself. People may call you names because Sometimes people don't want you to um, voice yourself. They don't want you to voice where you feel, where you live, or how you're feeling about a thing. But in the midst of it all, you've got to speak up for you, right? If you don't speak up for you, chances are no one will speak up for you. If you find yourself in that kind of a situation and you are after a particular goal or you're shooting for something Uh, within the arena that you serve, then I want to encourage you to simply persevere. Hear and don't hear. Let some things pass right over your head. Stay focused on what your goal is. If you have a strategy and that's a part of it, but it looks like it's not going the way you want it to go, persevere, hang on in there, and persist without delay toward your goals, toward your success. Why am I saying it like that? Because What you want in life may not be so easy to grasp. You're going to have naysayers. You're going to have people pose you. You're going to have people that seemingly are appointed to be there to bring you down, whether uh, whether in title, in grade, or whether just in your mental capacities or in your feelings. I want you to know in order to persevere, you're going to have to rise above that kind of a storm You're going to have to speak up, you're going to have to speak out, and you're going to have to stay focused. Stay focused. You know the the term survival of the fittest, right? Survival of the fittest. If you're going after a goal, these things are only placed there to be in your way. Like I said, whenever the Lord is giving something to you, the enemy always wants to pop his head to cause the friction. But persevere because you are a winner. You are a winner. Here are some things that will help you when you get off track, because, you know, we do get off track now. I don't care how strong of a Christian you are. We do get off track sometimes. So to focus your way back on track, I want to offer these particular tips. With all the work that you do visualizing your success and eliminating excuses from your life, you're bound to get off track And it does happen to the best of us. But if it happens to you, please use these tools to set things right again. Number one, I want to encourage you to refocus by finding a quiet place away from distractions and thinking about your goals and really examining your reasons why. What are your why reasons? Why? Why? Why is this thing important to you? Why are you going after this thing? Examine your reasons why. Talk to the Father in your quiet time and say, Lord, this is my why. Does this line up with your plans for my life? This is my why. If not, I'm sure the Father will give you a different why. But understand, in the midst of it all, just try to refocus on what you feel that the Lord has already given to you. 
as your why reasons. So refocus is my first point. Refocus simply means to focus again. Focus again. You know, you lost a little focus. It got blurry. Or some lines got crossed. Refocus. Secondly, revisit. Revisit your vision boards. Revision them. Study them. Look at them, not just as pictures, not just as a timeline, but re, uh, revisit this vision board and study it. And if you've got to add something to it because your vision board should be a living vision board because life happens and things don't always work out the way that we want them to. So revisit, that means visit again, that vision board. Study it and get yourself back on track. The third point is not just to refocus and revisit, but to read, 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 and reading is so important. Read something powerful. Read something that's uplifting to your spirit. Develop a reading list of books and read on websites that just ignite things in your spirit. Sometimes I can read some things and something just jumps on the inside of me, and it gives me like a surge of of, of motivation, and I jump up and I say, oh, i got to get to this. I've got to do this or that or the other. So, yes. It can happen for you, too. Read blogs, things that coincide with where you're going. Read these things. Yeah, read these things. Just in case negativity creeps in, you'll have some positivity to knock it out of the ballpark. Number four, I want to encourage you to resist the temptation to give your ear to negativity and to give voice to the negativity in your mind. I want to ask you to set yourself so you're going to resist the temptation to listen to all of the uh, the chatter. You want to know this, you want to know that, you want to know that, you want to, and these are the negative things that's being shared. And you're thinking that, okay, well, I just want to be in a no. No, you're the gatekeeper, right? Too much negativity in is going to cause you to feel too heavy to move forward. So resist the negative voices in your ear and resist giving voice to negative thoughts in your mind, such as, I'm not good enough. Oh, well, they'll never choose me. Well, I didn't go to a certain school, and all they want is people that went to those kinds of schools or people with those kinds of degrees. You know, they're not going to give me a chance to show what I can do. Don't give voice to that. Those kind of things should not be a part of the conversations you have with yourself. That's right. I said have with yourself. I don't believe talking to yourself makes you crazy. Now, there are a lot of things out there that indicate that somebody could be crazy, but talking to yourself, not necessarily. You talk to yourself to say, I can, I will, I must. Things you say to yourself, and that's what you give voice to. But you don't give voice to negative thoughts in your mind, but you cast them down. So not only refocus and revisit and read and resist, but review what you've accomplished thus far on your journey. Shout glory. Say praise the Lord. Be grateful that the Lord has given you a great journey thus far, that it has been good. Rejoice as you review. Rejoice because God showed up for you so many times before, and he'll show up for you again. So those are ways to get back on track. Refocus. Find that quiet place. Revisit your vision board. Study it. Read something powerful, something exciting and uplifting, websites, blogs, books, and so forth. Resist the temptation to give ear to negative talk and to give voice to negative thoughts. And review what God has already done for you. Shout glory and keep on trucking. I pray that you have been blessed today. Hey, don't forget to be a good neighbor. Call somebody, see how they're doing. Help somebody out if you can. Pray for each other. Be there for each other. Remember, we're all in this together. This has been the Loretta Petit Show, Women Winning at Life from Ministry to Marketplace. My name is Loretta Petit, and I'm excited. I'm praising God because I'm winning at life. Till next time, may God bless you. Bye-bye.
No. 